welcome to Paths. I am your host, J.O. Benjamin, and I am so excited that we have actor, director, special guest here today on the show, Terry J. Vaughn. How are you feeling today? I am fantastic. fantastic. And I love your energy. Oh, and I love you. your voice. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I might hit you up for some, you know, voice acting lessons. I am <laughs> manifestation. <laughs> okay. So let's jump right into it. Let's start from the beginning. Where okay. are you from? And, and what's your background? So I'm from San Francisco, yeah. born and raised in the city. Um, I um, went to college in Cal at Cal State Hayward, yeah. which is also in the Bay Area. Um, I went to school for advertising. And during that time in college, maybe around my fifth year in college. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's funny. Um, I was approached by a friend to participate in the Miss Black California pageant. Yeah. Me and some of my girlfriends. And we were like, oh yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, that sounds cool. <laughs> so we participated in this pageant and um, just so happens one of the judges was a producer of a play that he was casting. And so when the pageant was over, he asked me would I be interested in auditioning for this play? And at the time, I had no clue about acting, about the entertainment business. I didn't even know that was a real job. <laughs> um, so I was like, well, you know, what does that mean? What do, what do I do to audition? What does that mean? And so he said to, he gave me the address for the Black Repertory Theater in um, Berkeley, California. And he said to show up at this time, this day, and bring a picture and a resume. And I was like, okay. I can do that. So me, not knowing anything, I did show up with my regular working resume, yeah. McDonald's, Avis Rent-A-Car, Marriott <laughs> Hotel, like my work. Yep. And, um, and the night before, me and my college roommate, we took pictures of me. Um, so I had on all this makeup and we took a Polaroid picture of myself. So I had this Polaroid picture, you know, you might yes. not even be old Polaroid enough to know what a picture. Polaroid picture Snap is. Snap and it came right out. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> that picture and you fan, you fan it. it. Yes. <laughs> so I had one of those pictures with me. And so I go into the, um, to the theater and I see like all these actors. And they're like, I see the 8 by 10 black and white glossies they were back then. They were black and white. People having these black and white pictures and people are like humming and stretching and doing like these theater exercises. That, but I didn't know anything about what they were. Yeah. I just knew that they were making some weird noises <laughs> and they were humming and they were just doing all these weird things. And I was like, OK, I'm just going to sit in this little corner right here and wait my turn. So I just sat there while all the actors got prepared for their audition. And, um, and then they finally called my name. I go in and I meet the director. His name was Paul Roach. Amazing. He changed my life. Um, but I meet Paul and he gives me some material to read. And so I read the material and he's like, that's good. That's good. And he's like super Berkeley. Birkenstock, thick, grimy beard, chewing on tree bark. Like he's com in incredibly artsy. Yeah. Studied at ACT. Like he's a thespian. <laughs> so he, um, he gave me some direction. He was like, I want you to read it again, but this time I want you to read her sassy. And I was like, ding, 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 ding. Sassy I can be. <laughs> sassy is what I am. And I used to get in trouble all the time growing up for being way too sassy. Getting yeah. popped in the mouth. You're so sassy. So I was like, oh, I can be sassy. <laughs> so I read the material again. I read it sassy. And um, they called me that night at home and was like, we want to offer you this role in this play. We're touring the country. We take care of all your travel. We pay you $400 a week. And I was like... <laughs> and um, that was my introduction into acting. And it was actually David E. Talbert's very first play that he ever wrote. And um, I toured with that show off and on for two years. But the huge blessing was that Paul Roach 
traveled with us the whole time we did this show and started training us in the craft of acting. Oh, and wow. that's how I was introduced to Stanislavski and Uta Hagen and Chekhov, you know, all the theater greats. And that, I just got bit by the bug. And I studied acting ever since that point. Oh my goodness. What were you telling yourself when you walked into that audition and everybody's making weird noises and doing all this? Were you, you know, were you like tempted to leave? I think most people would be like, oh, I don't know if this is it. I wasn't. I've always been the type of girl that was like adventurous. I'm a butterfly. I like to flutter. I was like, you know, I'll try it. It's like, oh, okay. You know, it sounds interesting. Yeah. So I wasn't, I don't ever remember feeling like I should leave, yeah. but just intrigued by what is this and what is this process and why are they you know calling me like why would they be interested in me so I wanted to go in and see what it was about yeah and you can always like not do it or say no but I was definitely intrigued to go in that room and see what this audition thing was about oh my goodness so from theater to to acting what was that first acting experience like that first set experience um, you mean off of the stage? Yep, off okay. stage. So after touring with that show for um, about two years, off and on, I this is what I was going to do. I was going to be an actor from yeah. now on. Um, so I decided, and me and some of the other people in the play, that we were going to move to L.A. and pursue acting. So the first thing I did when I got to L.A. was look for classes, because that was the one thing that Paul Roach you know, he really pounded in our minds and in our hearts is that you have to train, train in your craft, train in your craft. Yeah. So the first thing I did was look up acting classes. So I took a bunch of acting classes. Um, I landed in one that I stayed with for the long haul up until I moved to LA. Um, and it was with this woman called, um, named Bobby Chance, Bobby oh. Shaw Chance. Um, and I studied with her. I loved the way she trained us. There were a lot of people in there that that we, you know, a lot of us started working from that class. Um, and, you know, in class, what was so funny is that in most every acting class I took, most of the material that I was given was really dramatic stuff. Okay. Super dramatic because I'm, I'm, I'm really... Um, accessible to my emotions so it was easy for me to like tap into those things and to tap into the you know the the hurts and stuff of life and and be able to put it onto the character so it, that was easy for me so i always got those like heart-wrenching scenes to yeah. do so it was always funny to me that i i got known in this business from doing comedy um <laughs> And that also was very easy for me. And I, don't, I was always a silly girl growing up. I was always, you know, kind of the, the, the fun girl. Yeah. Um, so, you know, just auditioning. For, well, also, before I ever started auditioning, I um, was doing extra work. Okay. And that's how I learned how things worked on set. So that was the other thing that people told me when um, there was something called the Black Actors Network. Um, and it was just like a group of working actors um, and they would like pour into new actors. So I was oh, a part of this beautiful. group. Yeah, I was a part of this group. And one of the things they said is that, you know, get comfortable being on set. So, you know, do extra, extra work. So I signed up to do extra work. So I did several um, television shows, Melrose Plays. Um, what else did I do? Um, I can't remember. It's so long ago. Um, <laughs> but you know, as background, background work. And, um, I do remember my very last time doing background work. It was actually on a movie, on a movie called Sugar Hill. And I was <laughs> doing, I was in the background in the big like party scene. Like there's this big club scene Yeah. and I was background work then. And I was like, it was just that particular experience. It was like, I didn't like the way one of the actors was, was like yelling and screaming and how they treated it. I just, I was like, yeah, this is it. This is my last one right here. Because you have to know when you're done with it. Yeah. Because, or you get stuck in that world of being a background artist. And I knew that wasn't the reason why I was doing background work. I was trying to learn how people operate on set. So, um, 
So, yeah, so that was my final background work. And then, you know, I, I just started, you know, mailing out pictures and resumes yeah. um, to get agents. And, you know, first you get these really small agents that can barely get you anything. But, you know, it's a it's you climb the ladder. You yeah. start somewhere. So I did that. And then finally, I started getting auditions for um, TV shows for one liners here and there. So I booked. Things like that. And you booked them. Yeah. I and you booked them. the one-liners. No oh, job yeah. is too small. Oh, no. That's what I'm hearing. Well, yeah, you got to start somewhere. I don't understand people that think that <laughs> when they start auditioning, they're going to be auditioning for the series lead. Lead. <laughs> like, that's not how it works. Yeah. It's like you start, you build. You have to build a resume. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so I started booking, like, these one-liners. I think my first um, Sinbad had a show. Um, back then, and I auditioned for that. I got that part, and I auditioned for Living Single, and I did. I have one line in that show. Um, married like, with Children. Sounds like you were just like excelling, 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 yeah. like getting booked and busy. Yeah. Well, you got to get the casting directors to get to know you too. Yeah. And this was my way of, you know, getting to know the casting directors. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them were like you're really good, you're still just green. She's still green, she's still green. Yeah. And you know, you can tell the inexperienced actor, just, it's just something about them. Yeah. Like, but you can you can tell that, okay, they can be good, but that they're just not ready right now. Yeah. So, you know, but I started booking these one-liners and then um, finally I started auditioning for bigger parts. Yeah. And, um, you know, and the Steve Harvey show came along and that was the one. Oh my goodness. So where were you when you got the call for the Steve Harvey show? For the audition or that I had booked it? For the audition and then where that you had, when you booked so it? So the audition process was, for television, it's it's a process. You start out, you audition for the casting director. Great, you get past, you get a call back. Then audition for the casting director and the producer. Then it was the casting director and the writers and the producers. Then it was the casting director, writer, producers, and the network call. So you go through all these different auditions and the thing about this particular audition is that it never felt like work to me. Like, I felt like I didn't really have a lot of studying to do. It was like, it was just, she was just fun. I was like, oh shit, yeah, I can do this. <laughs> oh, this is kids. I probably shouldn't curse, say curse words, should I? It's okay. Uh, I'm sure they curse. She's like, oh, I can do this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can do this. <laughs> Right. Um, so yeah, but it was it was just an easy like I just she was just fun. Yeah. And I was like, oh yeah, I can just go in there and have fun with her. She reminded me of two girlfriends that I grew up with. So I took pieces of them mm -hmm. and just added it to the character. And it worked. It yeah. worked. Every time I went in, I was just like, Pshh. That was fun. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> that was fun. Um, and then when it got down to the, the final audition, the last one, uh, which is when you read for the network. Yeah. Um, what is that experience like? Is it a room full of people? It is. It okay. was. And this was at, they used, they had a, like a theater. It was up at Warner Brothers. Um, well, their C, the CW lot in, in LA. And they had like this little theater on the on site on the in, on the studio lot. So our audition was in this little theater. So the networks were like, you know, in the um, elevated seats. Ooh. So they were elevated seats, and we were down. And they see go, everything. They oh see my behind. god! They see. <laughs> so that was the only audition for this role that I got nervous. Yeah. Up until that point, I hadn't been nervous at all. It was just fun. I was yeah. like, oh yeah, I got her. I know her. Um, but then also when, and this is what you call the test, it's, it's your, your, um, your, your testing for the show. Okay. So this was my network test and whoever gets this, they get it. So before you go test, they give you your deal. They show you what your deal is going to be and you sign your deal, what it's going to be if you get it. Oh, so, so you're seeing the numbers, you're seeing yes. everything. You so like, oh. now all that stuff is in your mind. Yeah. Like, oh my God, this is more money than I've ever thought I would ever make. I didn't even know people made this much money on TV. I, I didn't know. 
And I was like, oh my God, really? Like I could do this for my mother. I could do, you know, you just start thinking about all this <laughs> wrong stuff yeah. because you really still should just be thinking about her, the, role. the character. Yeah. Um, but it's at that point, it's really, it's really a mind game. You have to control your mind. You have to get control of it because mm. it can just take you to the wrong thoughts. Yeah. So I was like, you know, I did all the exercises that I had learned in class. I was like, you know, you know, me, 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 yeah, you know <laughs> I'm doing my theater noises. Um, and but it was literally the only audition that I, I got nervous. So I went in, I did the audition, I hit the beats. But I, when I walked out, I was like, that wasn't my best. I was like, that wasn't my best. All my other auditions that I did for her were way better than that audition. Than that audition. Mm -hmm. And this is the one that matters. Yeah. So I was so mad at myself. So I went home. I was like, ah, oh, whatever. Another mess up. You know, because you get several of those when you go home and you just feel like, ah, oh, I didn't do my best. Yeah. So I was like, here I am again. Another point where I feel like I didn't do my best. Yeah. Um, and then so later that afternoon, I get a call from my agent and they were like, so how do you feel like you did? And I was like, uh, it wasn't that, my that's best. The first question. Right. It was the first thing. So how did it go? Uh, it was okay. It wasn't my best, but it was all right. I don't know. Nah, nah, nah. And they were like, well, really? Well, you got it. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I just started screaming. I dropped the phone. I fell to my knees. I just started crying. I was like, oh my God, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I was just overwhelmed with emotion. And yeah, I was at home in my little apartment in LA. Oh my goodness. Yeah, by myself. Yeah. Yeah. It just, yeah. it just, <laughs> It's, it's an amazing feeling. It's a moment where you're thinking, hey, I didn't even do my best. I didn't yeah. even get it. But when it's meant for you, it's meant for you. When it's meant for you, it's meant for you. Yeah. Paths tweak moment. <laughs> Please tweak comment hashtag. Um, wow. I mean, yeah. and, and from then it's just it's been up and stuck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, this it's a roller coaster ride. Yeah. There, it's up, 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 and then it's uh, and then it's down, down, down. Then yeah. it's up, up, up. Then it's, uh, then yeah. it's down, down, down. It's a roller coaster. And, and it's, it's, like, it's always like that. Yeah. It's always like that. So so let's talk about a moment where it was like down, down, down. Okay. What what did that feel like? And how did you kind of navigate back uh, up, up, up or out of that space? Well, Even if it's just like mentally and you yeah. and your feelings. Well, like after, um, so we did the Steve Harvey show for like six seasons. After that went down, of course, it was still on a high. It was a great show. Yeah. Got great reviews. Everybody loved the character of Levita. So you're thinking in the natural realm of things, mm -hmm. you know, the offers will start coming. Um, they, there was talk about possibly doing a spinoff, you know, so you're still on a high and you really think that it's, you know, it's, it's all uphill from here. Mm -hmm. And none of that happened. None of it happened. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got a call from um, the executive at that was doing soul food. And she was like, look, I got this part. I think you can really rock it. And I was like, great, this would be fun. It was completely different from La Vida. It yeah. was on a dramatic series. Yeah. It was a recurring role for that season. So I was like, awesome, great. So I got to go to Toronto for a couple of months yeah. and shoot. Yeah. <laughs> So that was amazing. Um, and then, you know, I come back and I'm like, okay, so what's next? Because all, you're always thinking about what's next. Even uh -huh. when you're working, you're thinking about, oh, okay, shoot, what's, what's next? Because you know they don't last. They don't last forever. Yeah. So you're always like, what's next? Um, and even when I was on the Steve Harvey show, like I used to, when the, every season was coming to an end, I used to always go to Steve like, okay. Well, I hope I get to come back for next season. <laughs> I'm gonna just drop that in your you know, comments. I just, you know, I really hope I get to come back. And he used to laugh at me all the time because I'm like, look, you never know. Yeah. You just never know. And um, so yeah, so I, I got to do soul food, and then um, and then Will Smith and, and Jada Pickett Smith, they were they had their show that they were um, casting for that they were producing um, called All of Us. Yeah. Which was a roller coaster ride for me, um, because I had um, auditioned for both of the lead characters because they couldn't 
decide which one they thought I would be great at. Okay. So, um, so I auditioned for both of them, and um, and then they were like they were gonna go another way, and I was like. Okay, and this is after me going in several times. And I was yeah. like, okay, let me just get that out of my mind. I'm done. Then they were like, they called back. And they were like, okay, we want, we want to bring you in again. And we want to bring you in for the network for um, one of the roles. Yeah. And I was like, okay, great. So I studied. I got, I got with um, some of the other actors you know, because we were cool and um, reading with them, getting prepped for my audition for the network, did my network read, um, was waiting outside the room. <laughs> and like, I'm the only one there. Oh, wow. And the network. And um, so they tell me to wait outside the room. Then they all start coming out and they're all like, you did so great. Congratulations. All this as they're walking past Same, me. congrats. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, okay, this is great. This is great. <laughs> so, um, so then uh, Dwayne Martin, he comes out. He was like, you did so great. He was like, it's good. It's good. We're good. <laughs> and I was like, great, 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 great. And then so I go and I get in my car and I get a call as soon as I get to my car. And they were like, they said, you, you really killed it. But they're going another way. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, you're kidding, right? <laughs> I was so, I, that, I was pissed. You probably was like, is it because I went and got in my car? Because I can come right back in the lobby. Right? <laughs> like, I, I would come sit right back in that lobby. There were so <laughs> many things. There were so many things. Like Jada called me and she was like, you know how the, um, the networks are? They were like, you know, because my hair was short at the time, they're, they're looking for people with long hair and this. And so she was complaining to me about it. And I was like, this is ridiculous. I was like, this is freaking ridiculous. Yeah. So then um, they called um, like Will and Jada because they were so cool and they were, you know, kind of mad that it went down the way it went down. Yeah. And they were like, look, there's another role on it. If you want it, you can have it. Um, it's a reoccurring role. If you want it, you can have it. And I was like, yeah, of course, I want to work with you guys. Yeah. So I ended up being on the show, but not in one of the lead characters. Yeah. So that was, that was, that was trying. That yeah. was a trying moment. And I'm assuming you had to really center yourself because being oh, on yeah. set for a role, like seeing a role that you had auditioned for. That I was all these callbacks. congratulations for. Yeah. <laughs> and you had to what? be still on set and be present in your role and yeah. the character that, that you were in. Yeah. Right. Like, like, like what? Like I the, <laughs> the level of centering. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's a, it's a blow to your self-esteem, but yeah. as an actor, you know, it's part of it. It's part of the journey. Yeah. It's, it's what we sign up for. We do, we get blows to our ego all the, the time. Yeah. So you have to learn how to center yourself and not let it affect you and still find the blessing in the moment. And so that's what I did. I was like, look, I love doing this stuff. I still get to go to work every day. I still get to be on a sitcom. I still get to make money. So I was good. I was yeah. like, I still get to do it. And you know, I don't have to work as hard as they do. <laughs> so you know, so that that's how I like. Yeah, that that's really like, wasn't a winner. But anyway, love you, love you. <laughs> we need you to be a coach. So, what do you do outside of acting um, and directing that really helps you center? Like, what's your self care? Is it working out? Is it nails? Yep. Is it spa. It's I work out a lot. I have to get massages because my body needs it. I carry stress, so I do get massages. But I work out a lot. I take hot baths. Yep. My daughter now, she kind of infiltrates my bath. I'm like, it's really hot water in here. You do not want to get in there. I can get in, Mom. I can get in. She's me in the bath. I'm like, oh, my God. So she kind of interrupts the flow of my hot baths these days. But, yeah, and, and my family, my kids, it, they keep you grounded. I think yeah. that's the most amazing thing that I have that keeps me completely grounded. It's yeah. like, and the stuff I do outside of home, that's my job, that's my work, it's my passion, it's my purpose. But inside this house is where it matters. Like all of that stuff has to feed this here. And if it's not feeding this here, then I gotta figure that out. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, so what inspired the transition to explore some directing? So from acting to directing. Yeah. So, you know, and I never thought that I would direct. It wasn't really, it wasn't anything that I thought about or anything I said, who I really want to, what I always did want to do was create. I wanted to create content. Yeah. So, um, but when I moved to Atlanta, I started teaching classes and okay. working with different actors. Do you still teach classes by the way? I do every once in a while and I hadn't I hadn't in a long time because I got busy and then COVID hit and okay. I just hadn't done it. Okay. But I am gonna do one virtually coming up. It'll be my first time doing a virtual class. You hear that student? Yeah. It's, be on the lookout. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> in June. Um, but spending a lot of time, um, I used to, I owned this um, theatrical bookstore called The Green Room several years ago when I first moved to Atlanta. Yeah. And The Green Room was really a, a, a space for artists to come and have books and materials all for our craft mm -hmm. and teach classes. So I taught classes. My good friend Tommy Ford would come teach classes. God rest his soul. Um, and several people would come in and teach classes. So doing that and working with artists sparked the directing bug in me. Yeah. What was the first film you directed? Hashtag Digital Lives Matter, hmm. which was a hood comedy <laughs> that I love. <laughs> if you love Friday, you love Hashtag Digital Lives Matter. So it was um, starring DC Young Fly and B. Simone. Um, that was my first. First baby. Uh, that was my first baby to direct. <laughs> and I love working with those guys. Um, Emmanuel Hudson, Ernest C. Johnson. Yeah. yeah. What's something you would say to a female actor who's looking to go into directing? Like, what's something that might have surprised you that she was like, oh, I wish I kind of would have known that about transitioning? Um, or just something that they should know. If I, ju I just think that actors that we... I love actors and I have a, an affection towards them yeah. because I know what we go through. I yeah. know the process that it takes for us to get ready for a role. I know the journey of an actor and the ups and downs of it. So I have a, a, a special appreciation for actors. And I think that's what makes me a great director is yeah. because I I talk their language. Yep. I understand their heart and their feelings, and so I can I can relate to that, and I can speak to that, and I think that's what make great directors. Yeah, the ones that can communicate and care about their actors. Yeah, because you know TV will have you believe in that directors just say action and cut. Well, some, <laughs> some directors may do do that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I so know. Um, I was ready for that one. <laughs> Spun me around. Spun me around. <laughs> but not me. So, so what questions are you asking yourself? Um, what questions am I asking myself now? Yes. At this moment with you or just in life? Oh, we could do both. Okay. If they're good. If they're okay. good. If they're good. <laughs> I know. Okay, so that is okay. Um just I always ask, am I still enjoying? Yeah. Am I having fun? Yeah. Do I, is it fulfilling? Because I don't want to do stuff that's not fulfilling. Yeah. I don't want to do things that aren't. Yeah. Um, and to trust my instincts, yeah. making sure I'm trusting my instincts. Am I making this decision because somebody said something or I'm making this decision because I really feel this and believe this? So I have to, con I constantly ask myself that, especially as a director. Yeah. Like, you know, because there's so many, it's a collaborative art and I love collaborating and I'm, I'm so open and want people to give me their opinion and, and whatever, but the end, it ends with me. Like I make the decision. So I have to make sure I'm making the decision that I feel and not the decision that somebody else may be feeling. Yeah. Can you talk about being a black woman in the space? What is, what is that like? Um, you know, no matter where I go, I'm black. So it, for me, I, I don't like stay in my head about that. Yeah. And it, the only time I, I ever think about it is when somebody is, where I feel like somebody is not taking me seriously or they're just being dismissive. That's the only time I ever think about it. And then I make sure that I use my voice because I'm like, you can't be quiet about that. 
you have to use your voice mm -hmm. so that they know that just because you're a black woman, you're still equally as qualified to be here or I wouldn't be here. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't really think about it unless I'm forced to think about it. Yeah. What keeps it fun? What keeps acting and directing fun? I like, what love are you so it. Excited I, about? I am excited. You know, I love comedy. Yeah. I think comedy is healing. I think laughter is healing. So I try to focus on things that make me laugh. Yeah. Um, I like to do movies um, and um, shows that are comedic. Yeah. I think that there are so many amazing um, directors and actors that focus on telling the hardcore stories, yeah. um, which are needed as well um, to educate us and tell those stories. But I don't think all of us need to tell those stories. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody needs to make us laugh at some of, some of the things, you know? Yeah. And there's so much that we can laugh about that, you know, that could be hurtful or, or feel um, heavy. But, you know, we're human beings and, and just it's, it's so many things that we can relate to with each other that we feel like only that person feels that way and only I feel this way. Yeah. And it, it, that is just not so. We're so, there's so much we have in common and I'd rather, in the things that we don't have in common, let's throw that stuff out and let's like laugh at it. Like, you really thought that about <laughs> me? Like, no, but this is what I thought about you. You know, I'd rather like bring these things out so yeah. we can laugh because again, I believe there's laughter and healing. And if we're sitting there laughing at stuff that we thought about each other, that's, that's healing and mending that relationship. Yeah. So that's what I like to focus on. So relationship currency, let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. Who is a huge influencer right now for you or a mentor um, in your life? Um, you know, I love um, Debbie Allen and Stan Lathan have been huge um, mentors for me. Yeah. And I love them. I don't bug them often, but, you know, when I have a question or I need something, I, I feel great that I can call them. But I also think just my, my girlfriends and my, my circle, yep. we encourage and motivate each other. I love seeing them win. I'm always shouting them out. Um, I, I shout out people that don't shout me out. I don't really care. I yeah. feel like we should, I gotta stay true to me. And that's who I am. I'm, I'm the shout out girl. I'm gonna <laughs> celebrate you. I'm gonna I'm gonna do all that. You the yes, yes, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, um, so that I mean, seeing us win that inspires me. Just yeah. seeing seeing all of us shine that inspires me. That's a beautiful truth, though. A lot of students will look at this video and assume that you don't have mentors, right? They're like, oh, she's made it. She doesn't have, she doesn't, yeah. you know, she's not looking to still be a student and learn stuff. And to say that you are looking to still be a student and still learn stuff. Always. Yeah, a lot Always. of students will be like, they made it. They're not trying to learn. And I'll they call, no, I'll call, a, like, if anyone is specific, like, not too long ago, I called Jasmine Guy. I was like, look, I have this actor. And, you know, just <laughs> talking to her about it, like, how would you handle this? Because I know she yeah. directs, too. Yeah. So I was like, how would you handle this? Yeah. Um, so I, I'm always learning. I, I'm, I'm a sponge, and we should all be. Yeah. Is there a director that you really want to work with that you haven't worked with? Yet that I haven't worked with. Oh, I love Ava DuVernay. Yes. Um, I would love to work with her. Um, I hated that I didn't get the opportunity to work with um, Gary or Penny Marshall. I really love their work. <laughs> they make me laugh. Yeah. Um, Spike Lee. Yeah. Would love to work with him. Oh my God, he's amazing. Spike, when you're watching this, yeah. Please call. I mean, <laughs> call me. Yeah. <laughs> call me. Yeah, it's not like you can't get my phone number. I'm sure you can get my phone number. I probably can't get yours, but you can get mine. <laughs> wow. So if you could say one line, one liner, um, one thing to the to the next Terry J. Bond. And I, Terry J. Bond and beyond. Right? Yeah. Um, not even just for acting or theater or directing. Mm -hmm. uh, what is that one piece of advice that you would give them? Trust yourself. Trust yourself. I feel like we question, like we'll get a feeling or we'll think something mm -hmm. 
And because we can't justify the thought, we'll brush it off. But for some reason, you had that thought, you had that intuition, which I believe is God. Yeah. He dropped it in you for whatever reason. Trust it. I feel too many times we don't trust it. We talk ourselves out of it because we can't justify it. And we'll do something else. There's several times along this journey I wish I had just trusted myself. Yeah. Um, what are some practical steps that viewers can take at the conclusion of this video? So maybe a workshop or a particular book that they should read or even a okay. film that they should watch. Okay. Um, I definitely am an advocate of study your craft. Yeah. So whether it's my workshop or someone else's workshop. I heard that. Whether it's hers or somebody else's. Yes. <laughs> um, actually, there is someone that I heard is really good here. Sarah Mornell. Okay. Mornell in, in the um, Atlanta area. But there's others. In, and sometimes you have to take a few classes before you find the one that is right for you. Yeah. Because every class isn't right for every body. Yeah. So I think it's, but I think it's really important to study your craft. Um, I love Uta Hagen. She has um, two books that I still refer to. Um, re um, Respect for the actor and a challenge for the actor. Yeah. Love those books. I recommend those. Um, there's Suzanne um, Batman. I believe that's how you say her name. Has it. Nice. Is that right? Batson. Batson. Susan Batson? Yes. In New York. Yes. The Truth Book. But she also, yes. The Truth Book. Thank you very much. <laughs> the Truth Book. Um, uh, Susan Batson. Um, and who else do I love? When you're watching film or television, if this is, is, if this is the craft that you are going into, to start looking at it differently. Okay. To see how they move, see how they speak, how they have eye contact, and just start looking at it as a class instead of just looking at it for entertainment. Yeah. Look at it as a class. And then, you know, there's we have so much at our fingertips online now. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like, you know, you can Google anything. Um, but always, always, always doing something that helps you in your craft if this is what you're going to do. Because if you're not doing that, then I don't really think you're that serious. Yeah. It's just my thoughts. Yeah. Oh my gosh, y'all, there you have it. <laughs> Our special guest, Terry J. Vaughn. I'm so excited. I keep going like this because I want to like grab your hands. Let's do it. <laughs> A little nervous about it. <laughs> Terry J. Vaughn on the show of Paths, y'all. I am your host, Dale Benjamin, and I hope you trust yourself and tune in. Yeah. Thank y'all.